Hello everyone, my name is Sonny Wilson. I'm the co-founder and strength and conditioning coach at Boxing Science. And welcome to this workshop, Rotational Training for Boxing Performance. Now, rotational training takes a big part in strength and conditioning in boxing. The reason why is quite obvious, because we have to rotate nice and forceful when we're throwing single and combination punches. But it's all about how we get there, what's the journey to make sure that you're being nice and explosive in that rotational action. The main thing that we need to be, we need to be mobile. We need to make sure that we're mobile around the top half of our back, mobile in our hips, to make sure that when we are rotating, we're using the right muscles at the right time. Also, we need to be stable and strong, so we can uh, use the right muscles, create that uh, strength, absorb that force, and fire it into combination punches. So let's say if somebody's throwing a right hand left hook, if they throw that right hand, and they haven't got that rotational stability to absorb that force, they won't be able to reproduce that force going round into that left hook action. So it's important that we build up rotational strength and stability because the main goal of rotational training is to improve uh, the stretch shortening cycle of the core muscles through rotation. Now, if you watch uh, a lot of our workshops, we talk about uh, plyometrics, the ability to absorb that force when going into jumping action. And boxers struggle with this, absorbing that force in jumping action, so they need to uh, improve their eccentric strength first. A little bit similar uh, with the core training, we need to be able to absorb that force when rotating to then reproduce force in that rotational action. So we're going to take you through four key stages. We're going to look to mobilize, separate lower body to upper body, because this is really important when transferring energy through the kinetic chain. Then we're going to look to uh, improve strength and stability through a series of exercises. And then we're going to look to some more explosive exercises uh, using some med ball training. Okay, so I've got Calm Beardo here. He's going to demonstrate once again. And we're going to start off with some upper and lower body separation. Now this is really important to disassociate your lower body and upper body for transferring force in the kinetic chain. If we're not being able to, uh, obviously in a boxing action we want to link it all up together, but if we haven't got that control of our lower body when we're rotating, let's say we're throwing that right hand left hook again, if, our, if we're rotating our upper body and our legs aren't stable enough, we won't be able to reproduce that force across. So it's important that we look to uh, improve rotational uh, mobility by separating up and lower body. Another example of improving rotational mobility is improving thoracic rotation. And this is uh, actually featured in one of our workshops on the Boxing Science Membership. So if you haven't checked that out yet, uh, check that out on Coach's Corner. So what we're going to do, Callum, we're going to uh, go on favourite exercise for separating upper and lower body is just a, a lunge and rotate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can use a broomstick. You can also use a, like a light uh, plate, a, a light weight to rotate with, but a broomstick is pretty good. So you're going to have your arms out as you lunge down and you're going to rotate over that front leg. Good. So what's important with this, this is just not like kind of rotate forward and just fling your arms out to the side. You want to make sure that you're actually rotating all that upper body. So I always say to keep your arms in sync with that upper body as you're rotating round. That's something what Cam's doing really well there. Good. So when we come out again, Cal, okay, just make sure that that lower body's staying nice and stable. Good. And then left leg. Nice. Okay, so Callum's just doing one action at the minute where he's lunging out and rotating over that front leg. We can also rotate on the inside as well. What you've got to be careful of here is this knee turning in. You're not going to be able to rotate as much on this side, so don't start super compensating and just moving your arms around and moving your legs in. Just get that little bit of rotation, but make sure that you're still under control. Let's have a look at that one, Cal. 
you see there, this knee wanting to move in straight away. So come down, nice. Good, better. Now do both ways, so you're coming forward. Over, no, yeah. over, yeah. It'll challenge your stability more as you're changing which, rota uh, which way you're rotating. So here's another exercise to separate upper and lower body. This is going to be working more into your glute med. If you think about that, kind of like coming over into that left hook position, you want that hip to be nice and stable. You want your glute med to be firing through rotation. So this exercise is great for that. So what I want you to do, Cal, I just want you to go face me and just face me a little bit more, okay? Uh, bring your left leg forward and knee slightly bent okay and you're going to grab that hand here okay and all i want you to do is just bring your knee just going over your toe and then rotate at the same time good and then come back up yeah nice good and you want to try and rotate your body as much as you can loading up that hip but keeping that knee nice and stable you're tracking that front toe you're not going over the toe and you keep that knee stable, so that knee is only just moving forward, so you're just moving on the inside just a little bit, good. Good. Rotate without touching, good. You should feel that more in your glutes yeah. now. Brilliant, let's try the other side. See there way with Cal being a um, North Docks fighter, when he's coming over that front foot, that knee is moving in, this is switching off his glutes there. If he just brings that knee out, it's going to get a much more powerful left up. So there, yeah, good. Rotate over, nice. You've got much more control through this right leg. Rotate through. Yeah, go try and rotate your upper body as much as you can. Yeah, nice. Great work, good. Another exercise that we can do, and just really, really start to load up your hips and really try and rotate as much as you can through that upper body. Um, and plus, you don't need a partner for this one. If you do, if you do want to do that and you haven't got a partner, just kind of imagine just trying to rotate as far as you can, but keeping that knee nice and stable. Let's say if you've got a target on the floor to try and reach towards, and then back over and really load it up. But this one really gets your glutes firing. So normally you'd use the wall for demonstration purposes today. We're just going to go up against this pole. I want you to drive your foot into the pole there. Bring your left foot a little bit further forward. A little bit further. Good. That heel needs to be down on there. Good. And then I want you to really force through, that, force through the uh, pole, or it would be the wall. Slight bend in that knee, okay? And all you're going to do is rotate up. Brilliant. Try and rotate as far as you can. Good. And the challenge here is for Callum to rotate as much as he can, keeping this knee stable at the same time. Because there's that lack of movement now, his glutes are really switched on. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. When you rotate, I want you to kind of scoop it just a little bit like you're doing a golf shot. Play much golf, Cal? No. <laughs> You're rotating well there. Okay, other side. So we're really driving in. You want that space between your back knee and your front knee. Slight bend of this knee here, good. And then really rotate through, good. And minimal movement or no movement in there. And try and rotate your upper body as much as you can. So I've just shown you three key exercises to use for upper and lower body separation, which will make you rotate a lot more effectively. Okay, now we're going to look to uh, improve rotational strength and stability. First of all, we want to improve uh, stability through rotation. And there's a lot of kind of body weight versions of this. But the, probably the best way to get your athletes to cue, being stable through rotation, is doing a pull-off press. And then 
challenging different aspects of that pull off press as well. So I'm going to show you a manual uh, resistance version first and then I'm going to show you uh, a few different band variations. So Carl, all I want you to do is just stand feet hip width apart, slight bend in your knees and body to be nice and upright. Yep. Good. Your shoulders are going to be pinned back and all I'm going to do is push against you there and you've got to try and keep that in the middle. Good. This is going to be firing all your abs, your obliques. Carl's resisting that rotation. This is going to be really important for when we do our med ball work, where we're going to be like having to absorb a lot of force. So let's say we've got med ball here, and let's say you're catching it. Yeah, you're catching it, you're absorbing that force, and then reproducing. Here, all what Callum's doing is creating that rotational stability, and this will fire his uh, rotational power. So shoulders pinned back. Really important to keep these shoulders pinned back and down. Arms are level with your sternum. A lot of boxers end up going too high because they're wanting to use these strong and overactive shoulders. So we want to keep the shoulders pinned back and down. Arms on line with uh, your sternum. And a few different variations that we can do. You can do a kneeling variation. So pop your knees down. Uh, yeah, yeah, both knees down. Uh, arms out. Okay. And this will intensify uh, the strain on your core muscles. You're losing that support from the lower body. Also, you can do some proprioceptive work where Callum's having to react to different kinds of resistance. So I can push up, I can push down and round. And this is really firing up the core. This is great exercise to use in your warm ups um, before training. If you can do a lot of kind of explosive work uh, before boxing training and even before competitive bout. Okay now we're going to move on to some banded variations. Now we've got two bands set up here we're going to be using them for different reasons. I'd say go for like a medium tension. If you go a little bit too thick with it it ends up being more of an arm movement a lot of strain going through the arms. You're going to get uh, the band to the outside of your hand. Now the reason why is because we're quite strong in our pecs and our arms and that ends up kind of loading up in there instead of loading up in your core. If you bring the band to the outside of your hand, it's then doing a posterior shoulder, you can just feel it on the inside of your shoulder blade and firing up the oblique muscles here. Okay, So always go to outside your hands and then you're going to be in it. feet hip width apart, shoulders pinned back and just pressing out like that. Okay, Let's give that a go, facing the camera. Again, you can do different kneeling variations to make sure that you're firing up that core a little bit more. We're just going to go standing for now. If you find this easy, let's take your feet a little bit further out. I prefer you to take your feet further out than to use a heavier band. Like I said, it can be a little bit more, too much tension going through your arms rather than your core. Okay, good. So. This one is really focusing on uh, your core muscles, your obliques and your abs. However, we can do like kind of some pull off variations that are firing up your hips at the same time. So what I want to do, Cal, is just go into a little bit of a split stance and just lean over it and do the pull off press like that. And what you should do is feel it all in your obliques, but also uh, in your glute and your glute med as well. Left leg forward. Yeah, yeah, left leg forward. So bend your knees slightly, good, and just for just lean your upper body, good. Good, just bend that knee just a little bit more, good. Good. So you should feel it just in there, yeah. Yep. Excellent work. So this is important because a lot of um, what I see with rotational spillet is being quite trunk based but also you just need that stability in hips as well like I said when we're going to more explosive actions we need these hips to be strong and stable. Now one where we can be a little bit uh, lighter with the bands is where we're moving out away from the uh, the centre point, anchor point sorry. Arms are outstretched and we're going to be stepping out 
Uh, four steps out, three steps back. Okay, I want to do that three times, so you're going to be going a little bit further out each time. Let's hope we've got enough uh, band. enough band to uh, to go. So again, this is a lot of glutes, a lot of oblique work as well. So four. Four, good. So Callum's job is to try and keep that centered. He's stepping out, just keep them feet hip width apart. Keep them shoulders pinned back. We're not using them arms, not using them shoulders. Good, try and stay as stable as you can. You can see it's getting harder all the way through the movement. Excellent work, well done, okay. So yeah, so a little bit more dyna dynamic, but the main thing is, is to keep that body in neutral position. We're not rotating in. We're now moving our legs. We're not letting our knees cave in, feet come together. We keep them glutes uh, nice and firm, nice and switched on. So now we're gonna go on to something a little bit more dynamic, but still being nice and stable. What Cam's gonna do is gonna go into a split stance, just a little bit like a split jerk. It's then, his challenge is, is to keep his body upright, keep the hips nice and stable, knee going out over toe, not coming on the inside, pushing out all these obliques, all the glute meds are going to switch on, okay? We're going back onto the uh, purple band now. Again, band's going to be just onto the outside of the hand, keep your shoulder blades back, good. Good. If you just want to stand, stand a little bit upright to start off with, and then down. Good, well done. Weight's going through front heel. Good. What's that knee coming back? Good. Good. Weight's going through that front heel, mate. Good, and when we press out, watch these shoulders turning in. Yep. You want to keep the shoulders blades pinned back. Good. You found it like, a little bit tougher there. Yeah. Brilliant. Good work. So them exercises, they improved rotational stability. So how much force we can absorb. But now we want to kind of uh, express force through that rotational movement. This doesn't mean that it needs to be fast or explosive, but it's just challenging that upper body rotation, that trunk rotation. Now one of the key exercises, the landmine rotations, we're not going to be doing that today, but make sure you check out our core training workshop uh, which is included in the Boxing Science Membership. We're going to go on some band variations again, but this time instead of being stable through our trunk, we're actually going to go and do some rotations. So we're going to be using the purple band again. Sam, I don't want you to stand out too far. And I want you to have your hand on the inside this time. The reason why it can be a little bit too difficult to keep that arm in line for your shoulder, okay? So have your arm, we want as arms in sync all the time. It's gonna provide a little bit more support in there. I just want you to do a polar press, mm -hmm. rotate your upper body. Keep your lower body nice and stable. Good. Most questions that I receive on, on when I'm doing this uh, during our workshops is should my hips rotate? Now it always depends on what the goal of the exercise is. Is it to improve hip rotation with trunk rotation or is it to just improve trunk rotation? If you want to improve trunk rotation, you want to keep them hips nice and stable. You're either doing one or the other in my eyes, okay? You need to keep them, uh, if you're wanting to improve trunk rotation, keep your hips facing forward and have that upper and lower body separation. 
You don't want to be kind of drifting your hips because we're getting into a little bit of no man's land. We want to be working towards the benefit of the exercise, of the exercise that we do. So we're either not rotating or we're rotating all the way through, okay? So on this one, Cal, what I'm seeing is a little bit of rotation in this right hip. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to rotate as much, mm -hmm. but keep them hips facing forward. Good, you should feel that a lot more in your core muscles now. Good, keep that right hip back. Good, it's important as well to keep your body on an axis and not be leaning over. So I'm gonna give Cal a target, not letting that shoulder touch my hand. So he rotates through. Good, and you can see now he's sitting back into that movement rather than trying to lean over. Good, well done. So you can do it where you're just going from centre. We're pressing out each time and resetting. This is what I encourage you to start on. But after a bit, once you build up that strength and that movement pattern, it's to just go through rotation because this is like developing that stretch shortening cycle. So we're absorbing that force and reproducing force. Absorbing, reproducing. Either you just want it on centre or if you're a little bit, if, if you uh, want to add a little bit more strain, just go just off centre. Just make sure that you've got a lot of tension in that band still. Let's go. So uh, inside your hand for when we're moving round. So arms outstretched, good. Control it back, control it back nice and slow. Don't go, come to dead start, boom, straight away. Good, absorbing. Reproducing, good. See, we've gone a little bit more dynamic, lost control of your hips. Good work. Okay, so I think that we've just got to end of tolerance there, mm -hmm. where we're coming to centre, yeah. but when we're pushing out, that's probably like as strong as you'd go. Yeah. To just get it a little bit off centre, I'd say use a little bit of a lighter band. Yeah. Step out a little bit more and then you can get that stretch into your core as you go. Good, control the hips. Good, off the centre, so touch my hand. Boom, boom, and go. Okay, so like I said, if we're going to use our hips, want to use them all the way. So on our rotational work, band work, we're driving through this back foot, pivoting round, getting them hips all the way through, and at the end, making sure that it's squeezing our glutes. Not over rotating, where we're twisting this leg, knees coming out, getting to a point where we're able to keep our body in neutral position, squeeze the glutes, really drive them in. So you can, when you start off, I'd say, do it in a controlled movement, then back, and then once you get proficient at that, rotating through, okay? So we're gonna go through both variations with you, Cal. Good. Good, the challenge is, is to try and keep this nice and stable, good. Still get that hip extension. Brilliant. Good, let's go a little bit more dynamic with it now. Brilliant, well done. Okay, so moving on to our final section where we're gonna be working on explosive medicine ball training. I know it's the one that you've all been waiting for because it looks great, it's exciting to do, and you can really feel that rotational power coming on. However, when I see a lot of videos like knocking about social media, I often think that people are losing the, the purpose of the exercise. When I'm seeing it done quite wildly and just looking for that pure force, that pure rotational power, the, it's moving away from the purpose of, of the exercise as well. Going concentric only without challenging the eccentric demand. Remember when we talk about that right hand left hook again, when we go into that left hook, our, our core needs to absorb a lot of force to then reproduce. So in our explosive core training, that's for the purpose. We need to control the eccentric uh, portion, 
of the movement to then reproduce the force. And this is uh, what we're going to cover now. Now, the main way to do that is to break it down. Let's take the legs out of the equation. Let's go onto our knees and really focus on that trunk rotation, that trunk stability, and then reproduce that rotational force all the way through the trunk. So the, uh, my favorite exercise to use is the kneeling med ball very, uh, kneeling med ball rotations. So I just want kneeling down, facing side onto me. And I'm just going to throw the ball into Callum and Callum's going to throw it back. Now Callum's going to try and throw that back as fast as he can as well, just into the pocket and then throw it as fast as he can. You want to act like the ball is a little bit like hot potato. You don't want to be holding on to it for too long. Also, you don't want to lose any posture. You don't want to be side bending, rotating too far or flexing at the hips. Good, all right. So Carl's been doing that for quite a few years now, so he's pretty good at it. But a common mistake that I'll see is holding it on for too long, trying to rotate too much. Remember, we want to control that force as quick as we can and then reproduce it into fast uh, rotational action. Another key mistake that I see, uh, especially on the course, so if you've been on a course, you'll know what I'm going to say now, is that the coach needs to fire it in with intent as well. This is what I see too often, so let's go on your knees, Cal. And you'll have uh, had a few uh, work placement students do this. Throwing it in, not firing the intent, okay? Remember, the reason why we're doing this is to increase the eccentric demand. So we need to throw this ball with force into Callum to control it. For him, if it's a challenge, then for him to reproduce that force there. So I'm there. I'm having a little battle with him. Come on. Okay, so if you're coaching your athlete or if you're pairing up in the gym, make sure you're lobbing this ball at them to make sure that they're getting stronger through rotation. So before we move on to some really fast and explosive ones, we're going to go on to a little bit more of a, a stability exercise. Calm's just going to go on one leg or just like in a split stance position. And I'm going to throw the ball into him. And he's got to try and stay nice and stable through there. Okay, so let's do it in a split stance position. Start off with, boom, good. Exploding through. Good, yeah. So when we're doing the standing variations, it's quite hard to increase that eccentric demand because we're standing, we're going to be loading up this hip, we're going to be able to produce a, like, a lot of force. So we normally get like a, a few of us to, to work as a team and basically uh, throw it at a different angle so then you can uh, control that force by catching the medicine ball and then throwing it. But when you're at the other side of the gym, catching the ball can be quite difficult. So we've got to find different ways how to do it. Now I can do it up against the wall, but if you haven't got a wall in your gym, you've got to be quite creative. So that's why we're doing the split stance version. So making a little bit more of a complex, um, we're doing, it, uh, we're increasing the complexity of the movement. It's catching the ball there and then reproducing force and even though it's three kilos, that end up being difficult, yeah. quite difficult. Now, the different ways that you can increase eccentric demand, obviously through weight. But when we're doing standing, just got to make sure that it's not predominantly concentric. So the first one that we're going to do, we're just going to start from this position here, Cal. Then go there, and then through. Again, a little bit like the rotational strength. It's either we're moving your hips or we're keeping control. So I want to show two variations of it. So first of all, good. So we're loading up that hip, eccentric, and then concentric force, good. Good, start from your right hip. Good, this time I want you to really pivot that hip. 
I want you to move a little bit further back for my own safety. Good, we either get that hip through. Brilliant, good. Then you can add a little back step to that. So going from there, boom, and then hit rotation. Good, so as soon as you land, rotate through. Do you want to do it on your right side? I think you're getting a bit tired. Are you all right? Brilliant, so as soon as your foot comes into contact, rotate through. Good, one more. So that rounds up the workshop. We've covered quite a lot of different exercises there, but there's loads of different ways that you can do it, especially when working on the med ball work. We have got a workshop coming up with Phil Deru, where he's actually looking at some more med ball variations. And this is part of the Boxing Science membership. We've got loads of different workshops just like this. So if you enjoyed this workshop, we've got plenty more. So we've got over 30 different workshops on show mobility, um, core strength, uh, how to improve your fitness, what to eat before and during training, how to hydrate properly. Everything's covered. So if you haven't signed up for the Boxing Science membership yet, uh, make sure you do so you don't miss out. Okay, cheers, Cal. Nice one. See you soon. I really recommend the Training at the Champion programme because it's the next level of boxing science. I believe they're the leading brand in world boxing. Get your fitness levels up with this programme. This is the closest thing that you're going to get to be actually in this gym.